Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, April 21st, 2021. My name is Karen bowden -Schatz. I serve as Associate Pastor here at First Lutheran Church in Onalaska, Wisconsin, and this is my morning musing. First, Happy Easter, everybody. Happy first week of Easter. We have seven weeks of the season of Easter where we will dig deep into what the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ means for each and every one of us. So you'll hear Pastor Stanton and I talking about it a lot um, as we make our way to Pentecost. Um, I love this time of year because we get to soak in the realities of the resurrection and what that means for each of us, but then also get to move ourselves perhaps deeper into our faith and more into what God is calling us to do through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I look forward to those conversations. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that is actually related to that. Um, I was listening to a podcast on my way to work yesterday morning. Um, it was the Unlocking Us podcast that I listen to every Wednesday morning. And um, Dr. Brown had on Father Richard Rohr, who is, um, I would say, a modern day mystic. He's a Franciscan father. Um, he, I love, hmm, what I love about him is that he challenges me in my dualistic thinking, um, my either or thinking, um, to think bigger and to imagine God's love bigger and the impact that it has on my life as more and pushes me to use my imagination, my wholly given imagination um, to, to who God is, who Jesus is, and, and what the death and resurrection of Jesus actually has done for us as human beings and for the whole of the earth. So anyway, so he was talking to um, Brene Brown about all sorts of things, and she had quotes that she wanted his responses on, and it was in the midst of the conversation around that first quote um, that he talked about how in a lot of myths um, and a lot of ancient stories that we tell, most of them about men, because that's what he has studied, um, they have to leave home in order to understand the world and themselves better. And I found myself, of course, not listening to anything else he said after that little snippet, um, because my brain started going, um, which is why I often listen to these podcasts more than once. But I found myself thinking about my own life and the points in my life where I actually grew deeper um, and my understanding of myself, my place in the world, and my understanding of other people, um, and how that understanding deepened and grew over the course of my life. And most times, in fact, every time, I'm pretty sure every single time that happened, there was some sort of travel outside of my own sphere, my own home land, my home Place, whether it was moving to Philadelphia, moving to Montana, um, or traveling overseas, or traveling even across the country to a whole different part of the country. Whatever that was, most of the times when I had some sort of sense of who I was um, deepened in me, it was when I traveled outside of my own home base. So I was thinking about that in these last two years where we haven't been able to travel. I haven't traveled internationally since my sabbatical four years ago now, um, and certainly have just started in the last six months to travel in this country. Um, and But I've been thinking about what does it look like for us as followers of Jesus to travel to open ourselves up to new experiences, new stories, new narratives, um, different ways of being in the world when we can't physically go anywhere. And so that was the question I was left with in the morning because then I got to work and I had to go do the things that I do here um, and switch my brain. But I found myself thinking about that several different times in the day when um, my brain didn't have to concentrate on other things. And it really, where my brain ended up going was 
what I've learned um, as I've sought to be more anti-racist. And that is that in order for me to grow more in my understanding, not only of myself, but of other people, more importantly of other people, is to stop talking and listen more. Um, to seek out the stories of people that are different than I am. Um, to seek out stories of people of color, to read more authors of color, to watch shows that center people of color or LGBTQIA people or people with disabilities or anybody else who doesn't look like me, to watch those kinds of shows, to read those kinds of books, to listen to those kinds of stories um, and believe that they come from a place of truth, even if it's a TV series or a fictional book, those stories still come from a place of truth and experience. Um, and so that's a renewed challenge to me um, as I, even as I plan travels for this summer and for next year, um, to continually be challenging myself to experience new stories, to hear about other people's experiences so that I can um, widen and broaden my understanding of our world, which quite frankly, friends, I spend many of my days going, I don't understand what's going on. So if I can hear stories from other people, I can begin to understand more um, and also to understand myself more deeply. Because the reality is I always see something of myself in people that I'm talking to. Um, and so to, to find those connections and then to hear their stories, to build relationships, um, seems like a really good way for people of, um, who follow Jesus to make their way through the world. So that's where my thinking is. I'm sure I will share more with you as I continue to listen to the podcast. Probably it'll take me several times because... It's Father Richard, and he always gets my brain thinking. If you want to listen to the podcast, it's a two-parter, and you want to have a conversation about it, I would love that. That would be awesome. Um, I love to talk about those kinds of things. And I'm pondering the possibility of reading his most recent book about Jesus um, this summer and maybe having conversation if with other people about it. That always helps me. Um, so if you're interested in something like that, leave a comment below. And... Um, and we'll, we'll see if we can connect this summer. I hope you are well. I hope you are recovering from um, Easter, whether you were here at first or somewhere else with family and friends. Um, I hope it was a joyous celebration of our Lord and Savior, um, Savior's death and resurrection, and that you are seeking ways to live more deeply into the promises that we hold um, because of that death and resurrection. And until I see you again, dear ones, be well, be kind. Christ is with you.